This is Twit. Don't miss all about Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, all about Android on twit.tv. Uh, it's funny on Wednesday, Paul Thorat and I were talking on windows weekly and we kind of came to the conclusion, well, there's a slight risk, you know, with Lena Khan in there at FCC, there's a slight risk. They could, they could, uh, hinder the acquisition, the $70 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. The very next day, the FCC sues, uh, they have decided to block it. Uh, any thoughts uh, on that? Connie is. You know, the Microsoft's contention is this does this makes us the number three gaming company. Come on. Come on. We're not dominant. Well, you know, whenever it comes to Microsoft and monopolies in any market, there's a little bit of history there that gets uh -huh. people nervous. <laughs> that said, um, the FCC does face a little bit of an upward challenge because this is what's called a vertical merger where they don't directly compete 100%. Yes, Microsoft has Xbox. You made the point they'll be number three in the market, but arguably that's not Microsoft's largest business, even with the acquisition. But, you know, people are very skeptical of big tech these days. As we all know, there's a lot of power in these large companies and anything that gets a large company even larger is going to raise questions and suspicion. So we'll see how this plays out. Like I said, there from a legal perspective, there's a vertical merger is not a the same as a different, uh, you know, a monopoly making merger, but nonetheless, it's the air, the era of distrust in big tech. Microsoft did a little tour, a tour of contrition. Can you have contrition before the act where they <laughs> went to Sony and said, the fact they even said, <laughs> Rich Turner said, we or no, Richard Spencer, uh, Philip Spencer, I'm sorry. What's his name? Yeah, Phil Spencer said, who was the head of Xbox, said, we would give them a forever contract, but we can't. <laughs> so we're going to give uh, Sony 10-year guarantee that Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation 5. They went to Nintendo, did the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they went, did they go to Steam? and do, I think they did. They went to Steam and did the same thing. So they reassured uh, everybody, hoping that this would forestall the FCC's action. Like, And certainly this was one of Sony's biggest concerns is, well... If Microsoft owns Call of Duty, they're not going to allow it on our PlayStation. And I think that's silly. Of course they are. If it, Does it make money? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> you can sell it. Uh, Alex, is that a big concern? Uh, I mean, certainly exclusives make a big difference in console gaming. I just don't feel like console gaming is Microsoft's biggest business. That's that's where I wanted to go with this. Um, I, I think we're right about the FTC and the kind of legal world that we live in. But my, my question is, why do they really want it? And also, if we can't stop this style of acquisition, uh, what can we stop? Yeah, well, and, and Lena Khan, who uh, is the chair of the FCC, was also a very, when she was a professor, was it Columbia? She was a very uh, strong advocate of uh, antitrust action. In fact, oh, yeah. she wrote, I mean, she wrote a thesis on Amazon and, by the way, a Brit as well, so thumbs up. But, yeah, I mean, she's um, she's got the tech industry running scared at the moment because, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're really gunning for this. And it's about time. We need some competition in the market. But but what why why do they need it? Like uh, Microsoft may become the number three gaming company with this, but keep in mind that between Xbox and PC, they at least support an enormous fraction of the gaming market, and uh, they already make all the money in the world. Like what? Can someone really walk me through the positives of this deal for Microsoft? Because it seems to me that a lot of trouble over nothing. If they're not even going to get the exclusives out of it, what's the real draw? They it's a they lot of money, revenue. isn't it? Seventy sixty nine billion dollars. It's the yeah. largest consumer tech acquisition in. Two years. It's like one and a half Elons, yeah. It's the biggest that uh, Microsoft's <laughs> ever done. It was bigger than their acquisition of uh, LinkedIn. Um, that's a lot of money to spend. Uh, I have to say that Microsoft has been a good steward of gaming. My, they bought Minecraft and have, have made it bigger and better than ever, right? Well, um, true. Okay, I don't, I don't play it, but I mean, have they developed it much? Oh, yeah, quite it? a bit. Oh, okay, yeah. great. They put a lot into it. Uh so you were saying that there's a that, that Connie this this doesn't end 
with the FTC. They now have to go to court. That's right. That's right. And look, I to your question about why do they want it, where else are they going to put their money? They're they're an enterprise cloud maker. They have an you know a business audience. That's where they make the bulk of their money, and they have failed dismiss, dismally at almost every consumer play they've ever made <laughs> in the marketplace. We've gone through two years of a pandemic where people in lockdown, guess what, want to play a lot of games. And <laughs> fortunately, or hopefully, we're getting out of that uh, pandemic mindset, you know, current caseloads aside. But, you know, Microsoft is looking at the long game in the future. They need to win over a larger audience, younger audience, diversify their revenue. It's the same story, blah, 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 when they go look at anything else. Gaming has had a lot of potential just recently, although now it's a little bit sluggish. I know we might talk about esports and that whole world, but you know, what, what are they going to do? Go buy a social media network? I mean, they're looking at opportunities and places that have affinities with things that they're working on. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, a business decision, but okay, go but ahead, Alex. Economy, if they have, they have so much money, they're going to drop 70 B on, on one gaming company. Why not do the world a favor and bring back windows phone with that $70 billion? <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be, no, you're that being was, facetious, but you know what? No, that was that would be a about favor. This week. This that is, would I'm, be a favor. I agree with you. Who was talking money. about it? When I was seeing, I was seeing some chatter about it this week, but it was just like Windows Phone was such a dire operating system. No, it was a okay. Wait a minute. Hold whoa, on. Whoa, no. Whoa, whoa, no, it was no, a great no, no, operating no, no. system. No, I'm sorry. You it can't fails. build a mobile operating system and then do an upgrade and say, right, everything else is is now junk. We're not going to support it. This was it bomber don't get mad about Windows. Worst. <laughs> Windows Phone 7.5 Mango update or whatever the hell it was will live in, in infamy. Uh, live <laughs> titles were smart. I'm really tired of live titles were smart. Yeah, and, and we need Zune. competition. This is right now the biggest problem going on right now. Hang on, Alex, did you just say Zune? Yes, I I, I owned a Zune. I, oh my I purchased God. Like, the Zune You've, pass just, to ruin I'm, your credibility. We, we, we've been friends for so long, but it I'm wasn't not sure I can. I brown can, I was it, Alex? It. Was it a brown Zune? I, I had the black zoom okay. with the, the blue trim. And I will tell you this. When I was working on a farm, the the Zoom could get me through a 12 or 13 hour yeah. shift driving harvesters on one charge. And at the time, my iPod couldn't do that. And so the Zoom saved my bacon when I really needed it. I have and to I say, this was the last ah. Zoom. The Zoom HD was actually really, really good. They finally got it right at the end. But this was the same problem with Windows all solid Phone. State all you know, that. the Nokia phones were absolutely fantastic. Amazing Running? Cam amazing cameras. What operating system? Running Windows Phone. Thank you. But then they bought Nokia, destroyed the company, gave up on it. And if they're going to come back in again, they it's got to be good. I don't think they're going to I don't think there's a chance in hell they're coming back to phones. But I would say this. First of all, they probably, unfortunately, would use Android. Because mm. the real problem with Windows Phone was they couldn't get the developers to support yeah. it and the phone companies to support it. If you don't put it in the store on the right. front desk, as somebody's walking in, nobody's going to ever buy it. It was the same with the Palm Pre, yeah. And so they didn't get the they didn't get the support they needed to make it a success. And next, if, if Microsoft does a phone... In fact, they do one. The, I mean, they don't like to call it that, but the Duo is a phone and it's running Android, yeah. which is disappointing. So, I do think, I agree so with let's you talk about Go ahead, Connie. Hmm. What, what is Microsoft buying? They're trying to buy an audience. They're trying to buy a customer base. They're yeah. trying to buy developers, right? And that's what Activision potentially can, gives them, right? It doesn't give them a great corporate culture at Activision. That all needs to be cleaned up, obviously. But they're trying to buy growth in audiences and in communities and developers. Is it yeah. the smart move? I'm not going to say it's the smart move. They have a lot of money. <laughs> Remember once upon a time they wanted to buy Yahoo for $49 billion and I forget what year that was, and that would have been an incredible acquisition 15 years or 20 years ago, whenever that was. But, you know, you have companies that are looking at paths ahead, and I'm not going to say that they're always making decisions in the best interest of what is the best technology, what's great, what do we want to bring to the marketplace. So, okay. Okay, I, I love I love that they bought GitHub, did very well with it. Um, yeah, they've been good actually, stewards Alex, there. Yep. Yeah, they brought Linux to Windows. In fact, are I they good stewards at LinkedIn? That was their biggest acquisition. LinkedIn's not really developer focused though. It's more of a more of a social but that play. was doing what Connie was just talking about, which is buying community, right? True. Community. But, but what if instead of buying Activision, what if instead they bought Unity, which is public and very cheap right now because their stock price is falling off a cliff, and then they get the Unity engine, which powers most of the mobile gaming world, creating an avenue back to get developers on board on a mobile sense for Microsoft, bringing us back to Windows Phone.
<laughs> Wait, I didn't follow that. That is a step. long and a but winding I, but, road, mate. That oh, really I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that what we're seeing right now, this duopoly of Android and, and Apple, especially in the stores, the app stores, is not good. And Apple's facing a lot of heat because of that. Google's facing a lot of heat in, that, in the U.S. from Lena Khan in the EU. It would it would be the heat the heat is off if Microsoft by it creates a competitive phone platform. I guess that's probably a non-starter. I, I think from a software perspective, it's incredibly difficult because yeah. you know it's too late. You've got I mean for developers, it's too late back got, then. Yeah, I mean you either go mass market for Android and get very little money or you go niche for apple and get a bit more money but trying to create a third software ecosystem in the mobile phone sphere is going to be you've got to have something absolutely killer Actually, to get people to change in a way maybe ch i could change the story microsoft has shown a lot of discipline uh discipline that other companies lack gave up on phone phone quickly when it realized it was look at how short lived the kin was as soon as it realized <laughs> the product wasn't uh, going where it getting where it gave up it gave up on cortana and now uh amazon and google are stuck with a very expensive voice assistance that they have all incredibly hard time to monetize clearly microsoft realized that early on maybe they're showing good corporate discipline but you raise an interesting question connie about culture because yes activision blizzard has a horrific uh culture with harassment but so does microsoft uh, Microsoft last week, there was a report released about Microsoft's uh, lack of attention to complaints from female executives about advances from Bill Gates and others. They've had a similarly bad corporate culture. So, I mean, this... Maybe, maybe I not quite as bad as no, Activision. Activision was horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a problem at tech companies and general right so, the lack yeah. of advancement of women so i yeah. guess they're smart enough to put widgets together but they can't figure out how to promote half of the gender in the world so that's another conversation for another day well maybe not another well, day well, it's no, a good I mean, conversation i, I, I did a story about this earlier in the month yeah. because um after 47 years microsoft finally released its first sexual harassment report 40 they I mean, were forced to do it yeah I mean, I, I spoke to Katie Mazuris about this, and she was just like, well, it only took nearly half a century. <laughs> you know, it's just and, and one of the things that came out was that there were many cases where uh, they just ignored the complaints, of, and particularly with the, the highest level executives, did not come out well for Bill Gates. No, well, I mean, he's he, we kind of knew he, that he has a record. But I mean, this goes across pretty much every Silicon Valley firm, as far as I can well, see. Well, that's the interesting question. Yeah, it's just. It's just uh, how it is in Silicon Valley, and, and it shouldn't be. It should do something about it, I guess. But it's changing. It is changing slowly, but it's yeah. changing way too slowly. That's not going to come but, into any consideration. A court's not going to consider that. FTC's not considering that, right? I mean, it's just considering the market and the and the amount of share that market would get. Yeah, I'm still not. I'm still not sold on the deal, but I, I do think that. Lena Khan flexing her muscles here is indicative of what we expected from her when she got the job. See, I feel and like it's almost performative. The politics these days is so performative. It's like oh, not oh, really oh. necessarily there's a problem here, but I've got to say something because, you know, I've got to show the flag. No, no, Leo. Come on. If she didn't try to stop this, what's her point? And so if she did try to stop it, she's doing what she said she was going to do. I, I think you're going one level too cynical on this. I think we have a reform-minded person in the chair. There's a big deal with a big company coming through. It'll make an even bigger company. And frankly, put aside the fact that it's Microsoft, that it's Activision Blizzard, that it's big tech. Uh, Microsoft is one of the biggest companies in the world, period. And it wants to buy an enormous company that uh, may change the competitive landscape. This is where we should have the government come in and be like, actually, $2 trillion in market cap is sufficient. Like, come on, if we can't stop this, then what deal would not trip the, the red lines of corporate agglomeration? This is the blob. Okay.